Today I'm going to take you through the process of creating a bold esports style logo with a mascot graphic from the initial sketch right through to the final vector logo art. Esports logos are a continuation of the style of American football, baseball and hockey team branding that incorporates a mascot illustration with strong type and vibrant colours. The artwork I'll be creating in this guide is for a fictional team named Rhinos, featuring a stylized illustration of a mean looking rhino character. I'll show you how to produce the initial sketch in Photoshop, then we'll transfer the concept over to Illustrator to develop the logo into vector graphics. But first, imagine this scenario. You've just created the world's greatest logo design. Your client loves it, but it's still just one file. You've now got to save loads of different colour gamuts, logo variations and file types. It takes forever to make all the logo files you need one by one, but with Logo Package Express, you can format and export logo packages in seconds. I've teamed up with the Logo Package to offer Spoon Graphics subscribers an exclusive 20% discount, so you can pick up this powerful Illustrator CC extension for Mac or Windows for $79 using the code SPOONGFX. A task that once took over an hour can now be done immediately, leaving you with more time to bag new clients and design more logos. Photoshop is much better suited to sketching than Illustrator, especially if you're using a graphics tablet. Alternatively, you could use prehistoric tools known as pens, pencils and paper to draw your initial sketch, then scanning the result to digitise it in Illustrator. So in Photoshop, create a document of a decent size. I'm going with 1000 by 800 pixels. Create a new layer, then set up the brush tool with a small tip. Activate the opacity pressure icon so the harder input of your pen on the tablet creates a darker line, much like how a pencil works. Begin loosely drawing your mascot concept. Browsing for some inspiration beforehand can really help you develop suitable design ideas in the style of esports logos. I find it helps to draw basic shapes or use straight lines to draw the initial sketch, then go back over the same area and add more and more definition with darker lines. Once your initial sketch is complete, add a new layer, then reduce the opacity of the original sketch layer. Alter the brush settings to enable smoothing and shape dynamics. In the top toolbar, increase the smoothing value to around 50-60%. to This will help you draw nice flowing strokes. Don't forget to turn off the opacity pressure option to draw thick lines with no shading. The shape dynamics setting should be set to pen pressure. This will ensure the strokes taper like a real ink pen. Trace the sketch with carefully drawn lines. Pay attention to the pen pressure to produce thick and thin lines, particularly at the end of a stroke. Once you've traced the lines, you can then go back and thicken the line work with a slightly larger brush tip to emphasise the broad strokes. Turn down the smoothing value to around 30%. Follow the existing line work to create a thicker outline all the way around the illustration. Then increase the tapering of any open-ended strokes. Just like in comic book illustrations, light and shadows can be introduced in this inking stage by blocking in areas with black. The line work doesn't have to be perfect, but aim to achieve a pretty close depiction of what your final logo design should look like. When your concept is complete, turn off the basic sketch layer, leaving just the inked design. Then draw a selection with the marquee tool and use the command or control key on windows and C shortcut to make a copy. Or command alt and C for copy merged if your artwork is split over multiple layers. Switch over to Adobe Illustrator to complete the design. Paste the sketch into the artboard with command and V, then reduce the opacity to around 30% within the transparency panel. To avoid accidentally moving the sketch out of place, go to object, lock and selection. Clear out the default white fill in the toolbar, leaving just a black stroke. Select the pen tool and begin tracing the outline of your sketch. Click and drag bezier handles to form a curve that matches the concept. Then whenever you reach a corner, give the point a click to remove the bezier handles. Use the minimum number of points as possible to smooth out the irregularities of the sketch with clean curves instead. Complete the outlining path back at the start point then begin tracing the negative space within the sketch. Producing the sketch by hand in Photoshop with the correct line thicknesses makes it easy to simply trace the concept in Illustrator to reproduce the design but with clean vector paths. If you need to edit or tweak any paths, 
Holding the command key while the pen tool is active will toggle the direct selection tool, which allows you to select and manipulate the bezier curves of a specific point. Once the concept has been traced into digital paths, go to Object and Unlock All and delete the sketch. With the selection tool active, click the main outline path and swap its stroke for a black fill. Drag a selection around the whole design to capture all the paths, then activate the Shape Builder tool. Hold the ALT key to subtract an area, then click on all the black areas that need punching out to form the illustration. Make any necessary tweaks to the overall outline of the design to correct any awkward shapes or lines. To add colour to the design, open up the Layers panel and add a new layer. Drag it below the Line Work layer, then lock the Line Work layer to avoid accidentally selecting it. I've always placed my Layers panel in the bottom left of the screen, but yours might be elsewhere within the interface. Make sure it's visible under the Window menu. Activate the Blob Brush from under the Brush Tools tool group. Double click the Fill Swatch to edit the colour. I'm using a grey blue of 57627A. Begin colouring in the design by painting within the lines. Since the colour layer is below the line work layer, it doesn't matter if you stray over the lines, as long as you don't extend far enough to splurge the colour onto the other side. Periodically release the pen or mouse to allow Illustrator to catch up. Any additional strokes will automatically be merged with the existing coloured area. Deselect the shape and then change the colour to fill in the horn. I'm using a light beige of E5E1B7. Don't forget to fill in any white areas with a white fill. It can be hard to miss when you're working against a white background, but they soon show up when you place the logo against a different colour. The final colour of my design is AE368C for the eye. Shading is what really brings an illustration to life. Reset the fill colour to black, then find the pencil tool. Visualise a basic light source, then begin drawing shapes to act as shadows on your illustration. Start and end the shapes within the black line work, but extend a smooth line across the coloured area. Give each shape a black fill, then change the blend mode to soft light which is an easy way to automatically add shading against any colour without having to manually find a darker hue. Continue drawing shapes across the artwork to act as shadows. Give each one a black fill and change the blending mode to soft light. The soft light trick doesn't work against white, so instead use normal, but with reduced opacity. Clicking an existing shape with the eyedropper tool is an easy way to copy the appearance. Switching to the pen tool to remove points from the pencil path or to adjust the line with the direct selection tool can help ensure the shapes are smooth without any irregularities of a freehand line. Once the shadows have been drawn, the same process can be used to draw highlights. This time use white as the fill. The soft light mode automatically produces a lighter hue. Combine all the layers into one by choosing flatten artwork from the layer panels menu. To create an additional outline around the logo graphic, select the main outlining shape and then go to Object Path and Offset Path. Enter 10 pixels or whatever figure suits the scaling of your design to match the thickness of the line work. Go to Edit and Cut followed by Paste in Back to place the additional outline at the bottom of the stack. Change its fill colour by eye dropping an existing colour from the design. I chose the pink from the eye. Let's finish off the design with some text. Use the Type tool to lay out your team name. I'm using a font named Iron Strike from the Adobe Font Library, the black italic version in particular. Right click the text and choose Create Outlines to convert the text into shapes. Give it a white fill, then go to Object Path and Offset Path, enter 10 pixels again. Fill this additional outline with black to create a stroked appearance. Then merge all the individual letter outlines into one shape by clicking the Unite button in the Pathfinder panel. Right click and choose Arrange Centre Back to make sure there isn't any overlap. Add another offset path using this black shape, but give it the same pink outline colour as the main illustration. Click elsewhere on the artboard to deselect, then select the text again. Right click and choose Ungroup. Deselect again, then hold the shift key and click each of the white letters to make a selection of them all. 
go to object path and offset path and add a small negative figure to create an inner outline. Use the preview to find the right figure for the scale of your artwork. Choose a light grey fill for this inner shape, then select the rectangle tool and draw an overlapping shape that covers the top half of the text. Shift and click all the grey letters to have the inner outline and the overlapping rectangle selected, then activate the shape builder tool. Alt and click all the shapes in the top half of the text to produce a simple shiny text effect. Draw a selection to capture all the shapes that make up the text, then reposition them against the logo. Right click and choose Arrange Centre Back. Select the pink outline of the illustration and send it to the back too. To see how the logo looks against a darker background, draw a large rectangle to cover the artboard and give it a black fill. Use the Arrange Centre Back menu to place it underneath the logo. Lock this rectangle to avoid accidentally selecting it. To convert all those soft light shapes into actual colour fills for maximum compatibility, go to Object and Flatten Transparency. Drag the slider all the way to 100% vector. Let me quickly show you how Logo Package Express can save you loads of time exporting your logo files. Pick it up with 20% off using the link in the description, then open it via the Window Extensions menu. All you have to do is select your logo, then click the Set Logo button. You can then specify individual graphics for the logo mark, text or tagline to have them exported as individual files. You can then click the Make Print Logos and Make Web Logos buttons to have Logo Package Express automatically make CMYK, mono and reversed versions of your logo ready for export. Since this particular design is more of an illustration than a traditional logo mark, it's not versatile enough to be used in mono format, so those variants are deleted. Running the package separately with just the black line work would generate better results for the mono, reversed and mono reversed versions. Logo Package Express will then automatically export all the file types you could ever need to produce a comprehensive library of logo files for your clients, including AI, EPS, SVG, PDF, PNG and more, all neatly organised into named files and folders. So if you enjoyed this tutorial or learnt any new tips or techniques, be sure to give the video a like to help recommend it to others. Subscribe to the channel to stick around for more video tutorials and head over to my Spoon Graphics website to bag yourself my free design resources bundle by subscribing to my newsletter. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.